Am I the jerk for not building a connection with a recently discovered secret half-sibling? I am a woman in my 40s who found out two years ago that my father had an affair when I was a child, and I have a half-sibling about eight years younger than me. This person did a DNA test and matched as a half-sibling with my brother in the database. The affair was kept secret for over 35 years, literally no one knew but my father and the half-sibling's mother. The parents also claim they did not know the child was a result of the affair. My half-sibling had their world upended by this news. They reached out to my father and have had minimal contact with him. They reached out to me and my brother, wanting to form some connection. I have replied to a few online messages, polite but not overly interested, and answered all health and genetic questions my half-sibling has asked. My whole family is what I would consider very private and drama-averse. I know in my heart that if my mother finds out, my parents will split up, and the peaceful existence we are fortunate to have with actively involved grandparents, us children, and grandchildren will forever be disrupted. My half-sibling continues to try to reach out for a deeper connection to our family. They have gone on a podcast lamenting that we are not opening our arms to them and that their own young child could be blessed to have cousins if we would only let them. They note it is not their fault they are a secret product of an affair. I agree with that sentiment and feel for their trauma in dealing with the discovery, but I also do not feel it is my responsibility to insert this person into my life. My half-sibling admits they have a loving family, parents still married, one other sibling who does not have children, but desire a larger family by being included in ours. I struggle immensely with contributing to this person's struggle and trauma, but I also feel protective of my own family. I question if this person could have financially motivated reasons for reaching out, but from what I can see, we are all hanging out on a pretty average middle-class level. I fear this person eventually getting frustrated with our lack of reaching out and revealing themselves to my mother just to blow things up. I honestly do not know what to think of this person because I do not know them well enough, but I struggle to find a place of trust to start from. Am I the bad person? Yikes, keeping your mom trapped in a relationship she wouldn't consent to if she knew all the facts is pretty messed up. By not telling her, you're basically helping your dad manipulate her into a relationship under false pretenses. That's honestly a form of sexual assault, as she's only consenting based on a lie of monogamy. You have some responsibility here, and a huge one at that, for being complicit in tricking your mom just to keep the peace. Am I the jerk for calling my spouse out for inserting themselves into my sibling's marriage? Some background. My wife and sister-in-law are cousins, so they have been very close to each other prior to meeting us. My brother had planned to attend a live concert with his wife for quite some time. He bought the tickets a year in advance. Throughout the whole week before the concert, he kept telling me how much fun they had at the previous concert they attended, and how he was looking forward to the next one. On the day of the concert, my wife and I were visiting my parents when my brother and his wife arrived to drop their children off at my parents' house. My wife and my sister-in-law started to talk about the concert and how fun it was going to be when my wife asked if we could tag along. I immediately told my wife that I could not go due to some work-related tasks, but she insisted and said she could go by herself, which I was okay with. They looked for available tickets but there were none in their section. My wife started to ask if any VIP tickets were available, which there were. At that point, my sister-in-law started to berate my brother because he did not buy VIP tickets for them. My brother got upset and said he could try to sell their tickets and purchase a VIP ticket so that she could go with my wife. However, the tickets he purchased were not transferable. After my brother and sister-in-law argued, my brother said that he did not want to go anymore and that my wife could take his place. I privately told my wife not to go because she would be inserting herself into their relationship. She ignored my suggestion, bought my brother's ticket, and went to the concert with my sister-in-law. When she arrived back home, I called her out for inserting herself into my brother's marriage, but she insisted she had done nothing wrong. We ended up arguing about this matter. Soon after, my wife called my sister-in-law, and they concluded they had done nothing wrong since my brother did not want to go after they had argued. A few days later, I spoke with my brother. He said he had a bunch of problems with his wife before the concert, but the events that occurred during the concert made everything worse. His wife preferred to attend the concert with her cousin and not him. The next day, I relayed this information to my wife. I explained that she did nothing wrong until she accepted the ticket and took my brother's spot. I explained that none of the issues my brother and sister-in-law were going through were her fault, but she made a mistake by attending the concert. She again insists she did nothing wrong. She claims that my brother offered her the ticket, and she simply bought it from him. Additionally, she claims she helped my brother out since he would have lost the money for one, possibly two, tickets. Lastly, she thinks that I am the one at fault for calling her out and creating a huge problem out of nothing. So am I the bad person? Or am I taking this the wrong way because my brother is affected? Your actions were justified. Your wife and her cousin seem to be in the wrong here, especially given how awkward the situation turned out. She should never have invited herself to the concert, and it's clear she needs to respect your close relationship with your brother. It almost feels like she and her cousin wanted things to turn out this way all along. Am I the jerk for telling my partner they have 24 hours to get our sitter back, or they can go to their work event on their own? I have been in a same-sex marriage for 15 years and we've had our ups and downs. 
Right now is a particularly low point. We decided to have a child and have a 10-year-old son named Lee. We were both aware that it would be very important for Lee to have a solid male presence in his life. When Lee was five, we hired a sitter named Cody who was in college. He has been with us for six years. Cody has become the closest thing to a dad that Lee has. Lee has a person who he feels safe asking questions and sharing things that he does not with his mothers. At the beginning of the summer, Cody said he was diagnosed with leukemia. Our first thoughts were of him. My wife Deborah started to look for a sitter who could fill in if Cody could not work. There were a couple of people who we liked. All applicants were female. We decided to let one spend a few hours with our son to see if they got along. Lee was not interested. It just so happened that Cody was going to take Lee on a hike that day, and Deborah did not think about that. Cody came over and met the new sitter. He did take our son on a hike on Saturday and then quit because apparently we had already found his replacement. He said that he went to the sitter website where we found him and saw our RAD. He was insulted that we were offering more money for a new sitter than what we were paying him. I was very confused because Deborah was supposed to have told him that if he needed time off for treatment, then he should not worry because we would find a substitute. Also, Deborah is the one who pays him, and I was under the assumption he was being paid more than what he was. Deborah never told him that he was not being replaced because she did not think it would be an issue and has been paying him the same rate for the last few years because he never asked for more money, even though she could afford it, $15 an hour in Oceanside, California. I was livid. She wanted me to smooth things over because I have a better relationship with him, but I said this is all on you. Lee is very aware of what is happening, and how you handle this will affect what kind of person he becomes. I said you need to win him back, even if he decides later on that he does not want to do the job anymore. If you do not, then I will not go to your work's annual event next week, and I will just stay home with Lee and babysit. We argued all weekend about this before she called him up. I told her to admit that she took him for granted all these years and wanted him to come back and would offer him more money. I told her she is on the hook for the extra money because she agreed from day one to absorb that cost as I pay for other things. She thinks I am overreacting and taking it too seriously. He has not replied, and I think the damage has been done. I am just disgusted with this. I do not want our son thinking this is how you treat people. Everyone sucks here. It doesn't sound like you guys are functioning as a team, and the way Cody's been treated shows a lack of respect and fairness. For six years, he's clearly taken on a much bigger role than just a babysitter, and he deserves proper pay and terms to reflect that. You should have both sat down with him to discuss how to support him and manage the situation for your son. Finding out from a job ad that you're looking for a replacement is just unreal and unfair. Am I the jerk for playing loud music to drown out the noise of the kid next door, screaming and banging the walls? I live in a terraced house which I think would be called a townhouse in the United States, so I share a wall with the neighbors. Their child is profoundly autistic, nonverbal, and spends all day every day screaming, stomping, thumping, banging the walls and screaming some more. He is 5 years old and it has been going on for about 2 years, so I assume it started as soon as he began walking. I asked them politely if there is anything they could do to try and keep the noise down. Their answer was no. He just makes a lot of noise, nothing we can do about it. They were a bit dismissive about it. There was no attempt to talk about it, meet me halfway or try to figure out something, just too bad. Since that day, I have been making as much noise as I want to. Previously, I always tried to think of my neighbors first, but since it transpired they do not care, I have been blasting trip-hop, techno, and whatever I am watching on television because it is the only way to drown out the noise from next door. One of the other neighbors told me that the child's mother has been complaining on Facebook about their unpleasant neighbor, that would be me, playing loud music. This child starts at 6.00 am. I have to wear earplugs if I want to sleep past 6.00 and does not stop until 9.00 pm. I can tell immediately when he is not home, but these people do not leave the house much or take their children out at all, so there has been no respite over the summer. I tried wearing headphones but he hits the floor so loud that the thump and the vibrations still make me jump. I have quite a stressful job and for this to be my home environment is genuinely affecting my health. It is utterly relentless. I cannot remember what it is like to be able to sit in peace and quiet and read a book in my own home. So, am I the wrong one here? If I am, what should I be doing differently? You did nothing to be ashamed of, especially since you're not disrupting other neighbors. After years of dealing with this noise, it makes sense to take action just to get some peace at home. Anyone would be frustrated having to endure constant noise, and it definitely takes a toll on your well-being. If the neighbors have an issue, they could always come up with a solution that works for both parties. Am I the jerk for not going to my grandparents' house to celebrate my half-sibling's birthday? My dad had an affair and got the other woman pregnant. I was 16 years old when I found out about the affair, 17 when the baby was born, and I am 18 years old now and the baby just turned 1. I went to my dad's house for custody for a while after he and my mom separated. I was disgusted by him and really hate what he did, and him as a result. I stopped going when my half-brother was born because I just knew I would never love him or be able to enjoy a relationship with him. I do not hate him. He is a baby and he is innocent. However, I looked at him and held him and felt nothing even remotely like love or affection. 
I knew it was not good to keep that energy going, especially when my dad was encouraging me to bond with the baby, and his now wife was trying to call us the cutest siblings, and she wanted photos of us. My dad tried to fight the custody arrangement and make me keep going until my birthday, but a judge said I was too close to 18 years old to take custody away from my mom for that. I have not spoken to my dad in around 7 months. I saw him in court and that was it. I refused to have anything to do with him. I just think cheating in an affair like he had, which lasted 6 years, is disgusting and repulsive. My grandparents were upset that I did not fall in love with the baby when I held him. They asked me how I could look at a sweet little baby and not soften, and I said I just did not, and I think more time would make me more negative and toxic to the baby than positive. I told them I just was not interested in knowing him. So my half-brother turned one recently, and my grandparents asked my dad if they could have a small celebration at his house without him and his wife, so I could be there. He said yes. They invited me and told me it was a way I could have a relationship with the baby without my dad. I told them I did not want that and I was not going. They sent an actual invite anyway. Their celebration was Saturday and I did not go. They called me and texted me all day yesterday crying about me, not taking the chance, and how it was a birthday celebration, and how sweet it could have been. They told me they were so disappointed in my behavior. I told them that was fine. But I was not changing my mind or apologizing when I had already said no. Am I the asshole? You handled things appropriately. Family involvement is a choice, and you don't owe your dad, his mistress, and that baby any relationship. The baby turning one won't remember this, and it's not your responsibility to mend the breaches your father created. Your grandparents might be well-intentioned, but this is a decision for you to make, and you shouldn't be coerced or gaslit into feeling otherwise. Am I the jerk for refusing to let my friend open a Tinder account using my phone number? My friend was banned from Tinder a few years ago. When he told me about this back then, he said he contacted Tinder and wrote a lengthy email asking to be unbanned. They did not lift the ban. Last night I received an access code via text, which I found odd because I did not try to log into any Google account recently. Shortly afterward my friend texted me that he tried making a Google voice number because it would not let him use his phone. He then said he was trying to make a Tinder account, but his number was banned some years ago. He thanked me and said he appreciated it before I even opened his text. I responded by saying I could not do that because my Google account is tied to my parents' Google family account. I told him that I remember him mentioning he got banned from Tinder a while ago, but he never gave details. I think it goes without saying that he was somehow violating their terms of service. However, I told him that it sounded like he was trying to circumvent the system, which seemed suspicious. I think it is worth mentioning he regularly refers to women in a derogatory manner and can come off as rather misogynistic, which I find upsetting, disrespectful, and simply uncalled for. He told me it was a ban that was unjustifiable but, on a deeper level he felt ashamed at my attitude because some big corporation banned him. He said he was supposed to roll over and accept that fate from seven years ago over something that was equally unjustified. He told me he was equally ashamed I would remotely call him out on that and take their side instead of being a supportive friend. He and I live on opposite sides of the country and last saw each other five years ago. We occasionally talk on the phone, but we are not as close as we used to be. A lot can change in five years. I had no idea what specifically he was banned for, but I imagine it must have been pretty bad. After politely telling him no, I suggested it might be worth reaching back out to Tinder. He could acknowledge what he did was wrong and why, explain how he has learned from it, and will make sure it never happens again, and then maybe ask if it would be possible to have his ban lifted. You say that you haven't seen each other in 5 years and that you aren't as close as you used to be, right? My guess is that he's burned through a lot of phone numbers before he tried to use yours. He used your number without asking you to circumvent a ban from Tinder, and he thinks you're the jerk? Block him everywhere you can, and don't look back. Your actions were justified. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist in the description.